see, I was just so excited about this conference. <laughs> you know, I, couldn't, I kept waking up every two hours last night. <laughs> um, and I must really thank Dave um, and Anne Feltham from Campaign Against the Arms Trade and a whole lot of other people who organised this conference. Um, uh, for me, personally, it's really exciting uh, because in a way it was part of my life for two years, one year of interviewing people in every site, Burnley, Wilsdon, uh, Birmingham, uh, Liverpool, various other places. Am I understood? Am I understood? Yeah, I can't remember, that must have gone there. Anyway, I'm not very bad. <laughs> but, um, and then listen, another year, listening to all the tapes of those meetings. Um, so personally, it's really wonderful to be here. We're celebrating this initiative. And with the stewards, the younger ones, as they're way back then, like Phil, <laughs> and others like uh, Ron Mills, that's pity Brian can't be here, and pity Mike Cooley can't be here, but also um, Bob Dodds and well, John Wartley's here. Um, Dave and I wrote this story about the Lucas Fund. We were commissioned initially to work with them, particularly on the problems they faced in the trade union movement, the infrastructures of the trade unions, which we can discuss later. Um, it was an actually I won't talk about this later, but um, but we ended up working with them on this book, and there's many a story we can tell about all of them, but we'll do that in this evening. Um, I wanted to really just start with a, um, a quote from Mike Cooley, where he said that the aim of the plan was to create an exemplary initiative, sort of agitprop by action, in order to inflame the imagination. If he'd said um, at the end of that, if he'd added uh, in the next 40 years, I think it would have been considered a bit bonkers, but here we are. And so the other thing is that we're both celebrating that initiative historically, but also we're working with younger people. Uh, you know, the last year or two, as interest has grown, particularly in response to people thinking about climate change and arms conversion, particularly around Trident. Somehow the Lucas plan has always come up. So I found myself probably along with Dave and um, Phil and others at meetings and Mick and Ron, at meetings as big as they were at the time of the plan. You know, with young people like um, I think Loz Hall is here from the Young Quakers or Eric Scandrick from the uh, Scottish Green Party. But meetings, you know, two in a weekend of sort of hundreds of people uh, discussing the plan and its implications. Um, so personally I'm very excited, but also politically, because I think that in a way this... This whole, experience, this whole experience of self-organization, of building collective power for social justice, is absolutely fundamental in our, in our dealings with the alarming uh, growth of, of right-wing demagogies we've seen in, in the US and we're going to see in France, probably. Because it seems to me that building of collective power, that sense of collective power, <coughs> which you saw so clearly in the film and in Phil's uh, speech, uh, seems to me the best answer to appeals uh, of the xenophobic and individualistic right. Um, you know, and I think one of the reasons is that it enables people to realize their own power and with this, you know, uh, have a sense of their own capacity to, 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 to change, to control what's happening rather than to look to false leaders. And I wanted to just give two quotes that illustrate this and then say a little bit about them and about the understandings of knowledge and capacity that underlie this, because that seems crucial theme. The first one from Danny Conroy, who sadly died, actually kind of on the front line, um, and who was, you know, just a wonderful guy. He, he, was, he combined a kind of tough shrewdness, so he was really good at calling officials to account, with this kind of, um, you know, wit and sort of creativity that came out in the, in the combine. The way the combine did bring out people's, people's creativity and their, their their, their feelings for their wider community, that whole notion of social use. It wasn't just an abstract use value, it wasn't just an abstract idea. It actually pointed to social relationships between, between people as workers and people as citizens in their different communities. So he said management is not a, a science or a skill. It's a command relationship, a bad habit inherited from the army and the church. Uh, and then the other word, which Phil's already um, given, but I'll just reinforce it, is from Mike Cooley, who is kind of like a lasting influence on all of us. He's, he's still very much around <coughs> writing, um, but he, he can't actually get around that. 
um, the only way we could be involved in the corporate plan would be if we drew it up in a way which challenged the profit motive of the company and talked in terms of social profit. Now, these two um, quotes uh, seem to me really, I mean, I did listen to, to take, takes and takes of quotes, but these are and I think they point firstly to a different kind of trade unionism that was being exemplified in the Lucas Plan. Trade unionism that wasn't simply bargaining around um, better wages, around, in a way, uh, the profits being made from selling a commodity on the market, but, but a trade unionism which was about use value, was about the purpose uh, of, of labour, uh, and in doing so was about challenging alienation and, in a way, implying a uh, whole strategy for workers' control. And I must say that very much, talking about workers' control, <coughs> key to this process was the Institute of Workers' Control, Ken Coates, Tony Topham and others. And Tony Simpson is here from, from the Bertrand Russell Foundation, which, which um, was the sort of hub of the Institute of Workers' Control. Uh, and they brought together combine committees from different engineering companies. And I was working then with the Shop Stewards Committee at Vickers, which was also primarily making military equipment and in the face of redundancies they too developed an alternative plan and that led us to get to know the Lucas uh, shop stewards um, but they're reproducing producing again our thought that might be the day before uh, as a sort of spokesman as well as due to workers control imprint but so that was one thing that it began uh, or symbolised a different kind of trade unionism that was struggling with the use value, which you now see it's replicated a lot in, I think, in the public sector internationally, where workers fighting privatisation are not just fighting privatisation, but also talking about improving public services for the citizens, for the users. But I think the other thing that these quotes point to is an idea of a new politics, which is wonderful to have a quote from Jeremy. But it, it, because in a sense, it makes vivid that idea of um, production for profit, for social use rather than profit. That was fundamental to the Labour Party and to socialism. But it sort of lost its vivacity, particularly under the kind of historical development of the Labour Party, whereby you know, the focus was on the state, the state equaled the public, the public equaled the people, and so nationalisation was you know, a sufficient condition for socialism, which in a way the Lucas plan was saying no, they've had their you know, bad experiences as Phil, in fact, of nationalisation leading to redundancies, leading to the same kind of alienated work. And they wanted something different on their terms. And this is why people like Audrey Wise, who you know, was a wonderful advocate, you know, it's great to hear her words in that film, because she was a really, you know, really practical advocate of the, the Lucas Club, because it meant so much to her in terms of making socialism vivid, and alongside Audrey, of course, was Jeremy. So it is really historic, in a way, this conference is happening at a time when there is hope in the Labour Party, in a way replicating the hope that helped to give confidence to the Lucas workers through Tony Benn to do this sort of alternative. Jeremy's got the possibility of making that a, a, a general sort of strategy for, for social and economic change. Um, so, the other thing I wanted to emphasize is that both these points, particularly one about management and that sort of confidence in dismissing the whole idea of management and instead talking about the collective capacity of workers, it does point to a different understanding of knowledge, which I want to stress because people don't really talk about the politics of knowledge. Uh, and yet Mike Cooley, he was always <coughs> really stressing this, the importance of the practical and tacit knowledge uh, of, of workers that, that was often expressed through um, the making of alternatives rather than just the writing of endless sort of plans and so on. Actually, you know, the, the skill that comes out in <coughs> people's work in actually creating something. Um, and I think that this is to be contrasted really with the, in a way, the notion of knowledge which tended to dominate Labour Party thinking historically and even the nature of the welfare state, that notion of of knowledge being expert knowledge, scientific knowledge, the sort of overview, you know, presuming to kind of know on behalf of the people and deliver on the half, behalf of the people, as distinct from socialising this practical knowledge to, to create a, a power from below and also a knowledge from below. 
Um, why this is important now is both, is, well, is because actually at the same time as is indicated by that sort of ghastly, you know, portrayal of, 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 of Pinochet and Thatcher and so on, is the same, it's almost like it was a cusp, a really crucial historical moment when at the same time as the Lucas workers were, were demonstrating the importance of practical knowledge, but socializing it, sharing it, the free market idea, you know, Thatcher talking about, you know, we, we, we uncovered, we released the enterprise, is based on, on the, the, the free market theorist, Hayek, Frederick von Hayek, who also talked about tacit knowledge. When I read his essay on knowledge, I thought, oh my God, this is a bit spooky. He quoted the same person as Mike Cooley, Michael Polanyi, who talked about things we, we know but cannot tell, i.e. tacit knowledge. Now, what he was saying is that that tacit knowledge is in the entrepreneur. And he then wrote another essay on <coughs> individualism. And for him, that tacit knowledge was totally individual. Hence, the only form of social order um, was the market that, through the price mechanism and so on, you know, coordinated that individual knowledge. So for me, and I think for many other people, and we, we saw it in the GLC uh, and the whole idea of popular planning, um, you know, that the combine committee, the women's movement, a lot of sort of social movement initiatives from below, the, the plan from the bottom up, illustrating a real answer to, to free market politics by, by talking about, yes, tacit knowledge, it isn't just about the state, it's about the practical knowledge of ordinary people, and the wisdom is on the streets, as Jeremy Corbyn said, but that that tacit knowledge can be socialized, can be, can be the source of collective power, so we don't break the connection between social purpose and social outcome, which Hayek was saying, you know, is broken and therefore we can't plan and so on. But we can plan, we can plan from below, but we must always plan experimentally and be open to, to new thinking, to drawing in different people, different sources of knowledge. Um, so I think that, that in a way the Lucas Plan showed an alternative way that we could have um, moved beyond the, the post-war <coughs> uh, and And that was it was defeated, but it's so important that that memory is not just alive in our minds historically and so on, but is the basis for the inspiration for new thinking. And I think it's clear that there are many ways, I won't, I won't um, go on because I'm running out of time, yes, but, but, just, but just one way, I mean, there are many ways in which those ideas are now being put into practice or being thought about. The whole issue of arms conversion can be discussed in a workshop, you know, is now being thought about, not so much in terms of the site-by-site -site arms conversion of the Lucas Plan, but taking the whole idea of workers' involvement, but making it the basis of a, a society-wide industrial strategy to move away from the Cold War military economy that we still have, for Christ's sake, you know, years after the Cold War, um, to, to then secondly to address at the same time climate change with alternative products like wind power and so on. Um, and then thirdly, I think another crucial area, and it's good to see young people here, is the development of a, a, a movement around the new technology, the new um, communications and information technology, which isn't taking technology as a given, but like Mike Cooley and Phil Asquith and all the other Lucas Stewarts, is saying actually technology is a matter of choices and values, and we've got to ask those questions that Audrey asked, of, you know, for what, for whose purpose, who's going to benefit, and in a way the whole open software movement, the, um, the whole sort of Linux, you know, Ubuntu kind of movement uh, around new technology, the hackers movement, you know, which is ambiguous in many ways, but is about um, choosing and consciously developing technology for social purposes, which brings them up against um, corporate power. So finally, just to say, the Lucas Stewart always said, you know, a Lucas Aerospace Appreciation Society is not what we have in mind. <laughs> and I think that, you know, we must remember, we do think they're wonderful, and it's wonderful to see them, and the plan is wonderful, but what they were talking about is changing society, changing the world, and taking action now, and illustrating in our own lives, um, living alternatives. So that's the purpose of the day, to see how we can take things forward, as well as celebrate <coughs> the work of, of all the stewards. Thanks.